Hey everybody, Keith Dotson here, and in this video, we'll be looking at two historic daguerreotype portraits, very possibly made in the 1840s. I got so lucky to find these recently in one of my local shops where I usually only find tin types and cabinet cards. I'm really excited to have found these and to be able to show them to you. They're in what to my untrained eye seems like exceptionally good condition, and in my experience, they're also extremely rare to find uh, in this kind of setting. I've made several previous videos where we looked at historic photographs, so I thought it might be helpful before we look at the daguerreotypes to discuss the timeline of when these antique photograph processes were popular and to kind of put them all into perspective. Daguerreotypes were the first commercially viable photographic process ever invented. It was invented by Louis Daguerre in France in 1839. They were popular from the 1840s until about 1860 when easier and more affordable processes had taken over. But really, by the mid-1850s, ambrotypes were becoming popular because they were easier and more affordable to make than daguerreotypes. And while ambrotypes weren't as beautiful or as radiant as daguerreotypes, which a lot of people think may have been the most beautiful photographs ever made, they also didn't have that bothersome mirror effect that many people didn't like. Tintypes became popular in the 1860s because, again, they were cheaper and easier to make and they were way more durable. Like daguerreotypes and ambrotypes, Many tintypes were sold in cases like this one, but tintypes were so rugged they were often also just sold in paper sleeves like this one. Daguerreotypes, ambrotypes, and tintypes were all processes that created a unique original. In other words, the one and only print was made in the camera. There was no separate negative for making reproductions. That changed with the carte de visite, or CDV for short, which were introduced in the 1850s. They were printed from wet plate collodion glass negatives. This was a monumental shift in the way photographs were made. The negative meant that photographs were easily reproducible. CDVs were small prints on albumin paper. The process was invented in 1854, but CDVs became very popular in the 1860s, especially due to the American Civil War. But by the early 1870s, they were replaced by larger cabinet cards like this one. Cabinet cards remained popular until almost 1900, but I've even read that they were still being made in some places until the 1920s and even the 1930s. Like CDVs, cabinet cards were also printed on albumin paper and were mounted onto a backing card. By the 1890s, some other types of papers, including gelt and bromides, were being used. Can you see the color difference? More black and white than reddish brown. And by the 1890s, the gelatin silver process had been improved to the point that by 1900, Kodak was ready to explode onto the marketplace with a brownie camera, making photography a popular hobby for the masses, of course. The gelatin silver process is still popular today, even though it's been supplanted by the digital process. Okay, let's look at these two daguerreotypes in detail. I think they might be father and son, but I don't know who they are or where they lived or anything else about them, so it's purely conjecture. Based on their clothing, I'm dating the portraits to the mid to late 1840s, and here's a portrait of the man himself, Louis Daguerre, wearing a nearly identical suit of clothes, and this was shot in 1841. Here's Dad. Note the shiny, silky vest. The upturned shirt collar with, the, I guess that's an early bow tie or cravat, and the unfortunate Oompa Loompa haircut. Here's the first authenticated portrait of Abraham Lincoln, also a daguerreotype, made in 1846. He's wearing the same style, so while I think it gives us a good basis for a date on these, one more clue is the mat. I found a source that helps date daguerreotypes based on the style of mat, and according to them, this plain oval with a so-called sandy texture was introduced in the mid-1840s. Here we can see the mirror finish. Daguerreotypes have been called a mirror with a memory. So can I say how privileged I feel to hold these 177-ish year old historical artifacts in my hand? These guys look pretty well healed. They were probably successful. I wonder about their lives. Did you notice the slight hand-tinted pink in his cheeks? Do 
Daguerreotypes are printed onto a piece of copper plate that's been coated with a thin layer of silver. The silver was burnished and polished laboriously with a list of different materials until a high mirror sheen was achieved and all the dust and imperfections were removed. Then they were cleaned again with a toxic nitric acid bath to make extra sure the surface was perfect and that all organic materials were burned away and to make ready for the light sensitive coating which was fumed onto the plate by placing it face down over a vaporous chemical like silver halide or halogen. The sensitized plate was then inserted carefully into a plate holder with a dark slide, carried to the camera where the exposure of a few seconds up to a few minutes was made. The dark slide was slid back into place. The plate holder returned to the dark room where the exposed plate with a latent image on it was again placed into the fuming box where it was fumed with, and are you ready for this? Vapors of heated mercury. Yeah, this was not the safest process in the world. Development had to be stopped using a chemical solution of sodium thiosulfate, sulfate, which is still used in dark rooms today. Then, to make the image a little more durable, it could be fixed with a solution of gold chloride, which warmed it up a little bit visually and made the plate somewhat more durable. It's been said that without the gilding process, the surface was like the dust of a butterfly wing and could be easily brushed off with a careless swipe of a finger. Even with gilding, the daguerreotypes are still delicate. It's also why the protective cases were so important. While I was examining the portrait of Dad, I flipped it over and the packaging fell out into my hand, which means it's sitting pretty loose in the case, but it gave me a chance to realize that these look like they've been probably restored, cleaned a little bit somewhere along the way and repackaged. This brass frame is called the preserver. You can see here the tape is pretty clean. It doesn't look like it's old. It looks like it's been applied in the last few years. This reddish thing is a gasket, and it's what sort of seals the whole thing up and holds it in place. Of course, both of these would have originally come with a closing lid, hinged on one side, latched on the other. In addition to being protective, the lid would have had a dark velvet lining that could have been used as a reflection surface to help you sort of see the uh, daguerreotype a little better in any circumstances. Here looking at it at this angle, you can see that this portrait of Dad had some kind of a dent or a protrusion from the back side. I'm assuming that damage was made before the photograph was put onto the plate, but I really have no way of knowing. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing these beautiful antique photographs. Thanks for watching. Be sure to visit my website at keithdotson.com.